250 individual kutis at Pa'ok Forest Monastery. Over time, much construction has taken place. These are some of the first kutis that were built at the bottom of Chitala Babata Hill. Here is where the meditation yogis can stay when they first begin their practice at Pa'ok Meditation Center. The yogis can practice in solitude and reside peacefully in their dwelling place. Step by step, this is where they will learn the Buddha's teaching systematically so they can be able to progress along the Buddha's path. Some of the newer kutis are more remote. They are larger. And of course, they are very beautiful. Nayana Dubaga Gayinga Madura Vara Drobida Amida Guna Ganadara Walking the Buddha's path can sometimes be very difficult, but many efforts have been made to make the bhikkhus feel comfortable. Now nearly every kuti is supplied with water and electricity. Because of this, many bhikkhus find much peace living deep within the forest. At Pa'ok Forest Monastery, some bhikkhus are allowed to live in this very way. There are many kutis built deep within the forest according to the donor's wishes. There are many different styles and some are simple and quite old. Recently, some newer designs have been implemented, and today the construction has grown, and now there are many kutis. Some of the kutis are remote and allow for the monks to enjoy solitude. The meditation hall, which is also called Dhamma Vihari Sima, was inaugurated in the year 2000. The meditation hall allows for more than 400 individual meditators to comfortably sit with each other at the same time. The upper floor accommodates approximately 225 bhikkhus. Meditation is the main activity here. The yogis begin their practice with mindfulness of breathing or the practice of four elements meditation. Afterwards, they penetrate their 32 parts and then they will move on to the white casino using the skull of the yogi in front of them as their object of white. Later, they will penetrate their mentality and materiality. They will then know and see their past lives and causes so they can properly practice vipassana meditation until they reach Nibbana. Eo me duda, 
Venerable Paul Ok Sayadaw makes himself very accessible to the male foreigner yogis. The yogis are encouraged to interview with Venerable Paul Ok Sayadaw on a daily basis. The local monks are able to interview with the Saido under special circumstances as well. The teachings are quite detailed and Nibbana is not easy to reach. Likewise, it takes a very skilled teacher to give the detailed systematic instructions to the meditation yogis on the path. Sayadaw has taught many people the contents of the Visuddhi Magga, the path to purification. Now, with his success, he is frequently invited to teach abroad in other countries. <laughs> When the Saidao is away teaching abroad, Venbo Rewata takes on the teaching role for the male foreigner yogis. Venbo Rewata also teaches the female yogis whether the Saidao is present or not. He is very skillful in both English and in his teaching abilities as well. Lunchtime is one of the main events of the day. The bhikkhus must come from many different parts of the monastery. The bhikkhus must arrive early so they can prepare for the meal of the day. They use this time to properly wrap themselves in their robes. According to the bhikkhu rules, they must cover themselves properly. This is called wearing full robes. All the bhikkhus must follow this dress. Venerable Paul Ok Saidao leads the alms food queue. Although Saidao can easily have his food brought to him, he too gets his own food while following this rule as well. When the Saidao is ready, the gong is rung. There are usually more than 700 people who eat at Pauk Monastery each day. First comes the foreigners who take only one meal. In this line, there are approximately 18 foreigners who take only one meal. There are usually 50 foreigner bhikkhus living at Pauk at one single time. Next to follow comes the local bhikkhus who take only one meal. These monks do not eat breakfast in the morning and appreciate their free time for their own individual practice. Even though the bhikkhus only take one meal per day,